Raiders. These two teams and their coaches, much respect for each other. You see Sterling Carvalho, what a job he has done in his time. Two wins with the program and a couple of state championships. Jason Negro, 14th season with the program. Elite level type of character and a great guy. And he feels like you know, they have the pieces in place to make another run at a national championship, but everything that he's accumulated the last 14 years and building that winning culture has achieved such a high level of sustained success that few in the country can ever experience. Here's the weather. Pretty good winds. It was humid earlier in the day. As the days go longer, the temperature dips down. No sign of showers here tonight. And a very good crowd. In fact, Koku fans are waiting over the last three hours just outside the gate trying to get in. As Kahuku won the toss and elected to defer. We got a seven man officiating crew led by the veteran Robert Victor. Now, there are a few games on the Hawaii sports calendar that you circle. This, most certainly, coach, is one of them. And, you know, for St. John Bosco, we talked about how tough their league is. And just surviving that league is, it's its an unbelievable league. It's crazy. We, we, we didn't mention even Centennial is in that league. That Trinity League is so tough. And just, just getting out of there and winning that league is an accomplishment in and of itself. Tay Lockett and Owen Tomic back deep to return the kick here of you know, Kahale Puna. Pretty good kicker here for Kohuku. You see Tomic, baseball athlete, has an offer from Lincoln University as well. Christian Davis has got some Jets, one of the up men here for the Braves. A lot of hype, a lot of buildup for week six of the Hawaii prep football season. Whether you're in Hawaii or in L.A., thanks for dropping in. From Kahuku, off we go. Picked up at the 23-yard line. Here's Owen Tomic. And escorted out of bounds just past the 30-yard line. Let's give you the Zippies starting lineups here on the defensive side for Big Red. Okay, where are you going to find some leaders? Well, Hiram Moores is a Washington State commit. LeBron Williams has been great. He had a couple of sacks the last time we saw him play St. Louis on this field. Jaden Maritanangi, great speed on the linebacker spot. Very young defense, but they got a ton of speed. In the secondary, they're definitely going to be tested. Tedahiti Wolf, Manu Leleayu, Aiden Manutai, Madden Soliai. There's one senior in that bunch, and now here comes Caleb Sanchez. An offer from Nevada. Got that a few years ago. Sanchez. First pass of the night is caught there by Tommy Maher. Maher waited a long time as well to get a starting job over the last three years with the Braves as Malaki Soliai Tui makes the tackle. One of those crafty receivers that always finds a way to get open. That's Maher. First year San Diego offer his way. Got an Ivy League school pen offered right to Maher. The run game developing nicely here for the Braves. It's Chauncey Sylvester on the carry. Soli Aitui able to get the tackle again. Three-star running back is Sylvester, who just gets low and delivers some boom shots. Sylvester also offered from Arizona, San Jose State, Utah Tech, Georgetown, Bowling Green, and more. After the first down run, Sanchez throw over the middle. This one's caught here by Madden Williams. One of the most versatile receivers and players on this team. Got a first down to the 42-yard line. And the key there was the protection. Sanchez, very comfortable in the pocket. Look at this old line doing a great job. Double teaming at the point of attack. And, I mean, no leakage at all from the D-line. They'll send Dobbins in motion. Sylvester gets the call to the right side. That one wrapped up quickly by Sione Passi. 250-pound junior, second-year varsity man gets the tackle here for Big Red. And for the Braves, they're being very patient. They're establishing their offense, run game, some short passes off of it. In no rush to throw it down the field yet. Play five of the drive is a run for Sylvester. Oh, great tackle there, Hiram Moores. 
275 pounds of him makes his statement. You know, you rarely see a defensive lineman make a classic textbook tackle, and here you see it head down, uh, you know, run into feet, finish and punish, wrap up, head across the bow, perfect form, Ira Moores. Braves coming off a 37-14 win over St. Francis last Friday. Sanchez this season, seven touchdown passes. This is third down. Sanchez works it short. Wrap up there. After the catch made by Stacy Dobbins. Madden Solia, the 10th grader, makes the tackle. And the first big test here for this Braves offense. It's fourth down. And credit Hiram Moore's the play before to set up this incredible opportunity for the defense. Great open field tackle by Solia, but it's fourth down. Dobbins a transfer from Trapperal High School this past summer has fit in very nicely to this Braves offense that's going for it on fourth down. Five in the pattern. Sanchez lofting ball. This is broken up. You know, marker down. Madden Williams the target. Manulele Ayu made the hit. You know, marker down. Not sure if he arrived early or led with the head. Let's see here. He turned his head, broke up the pass, did Ayu. The coaches saying, hey, that's a clean play. Awaiting more discussion here, though. He did not lead with the head. It looked like a solid, clean play. The question is, did he arrive early? Personal foul. Hit on the defenseless receiver. Defense number three. 15 yards uh, from the previous spot. Results in a foul. First stop. I, I don't know about wow, that. Wow, that's surprising. You know, you, you, <laughs> it's a tackle. The, the, the receiver was going for the ball. Yeah, I know. When the flag came out, all the coaches <laughs> shocked. Cameron Jones now the running back. Jones, a UCLA commit, made that commitment in July. And now they're going to send Jones out because he's not properly equipped. And that's been a point of emphasis across the country in the NFHS. You have to cover your knees with those knee pads. And here with 8.59 to go in a scoreless game. And they just sent the re replacement out. <laughs> he also had high pants. Well, Sylvester, now Khalil Warren's in. William McKissick lined up into the game. And here comes Warren. Khalil Warren, good run. Fale Atuwai, the linebacker, makes the tackle. Khalil Warren, who goes 243. This guy is a load, averaging six yards a carry. Here with 8.47 to go on a spinning clock here in a scoreless first period. They're going to send another receiver out. I think they will. I think it'll be Daniel Odom. And this was discussed to everybody pregame. Right, they want to keep these players safe, and so... Now those pants are real high. Sterling Carvalho looking on. Cameron Jones comes in for Daniel Odom. Sanchez gives it to Warren. Warren spun away. Warren got off of two tackles, not the third maximum for Noy Moana. The brother of Brock for Noy Moana. All-Stater last year makes the stop. Great job of team defense here. Taking this runner, a big guy at 243, as we said earlier. He's a north-south guy, and they're making him go east and west, not his strong suit. Great job of gang tackling there. Jason Negro giving a lot of credit to this Kahuku defense. He's expecting a much better Kahuku team tonight than the one that played against Modern Day last week. Warren. Chopped down. Tedahiti Wolf flies in for the tackle. Third down coming up here for the Braves. That's sort of a first down. Great job by Wolf going for the legs. Kahuku always does a great job of leg tackling, low tackling, wrapping up around the lower legs. Just a great job. Sanchez, who grew up in Carson, California, always played with and against older kids. And so that maturity that he's accumulated over the last four years has been spectacular. Now trying to lead him for the opening drive score. 
Third and goal, Sanchez fires. This one caught by Cameron Jones, and Jones is stopped. Right at around the five yard line, Soli Aitui and Ayu makes the tackle. And now here comes C.J. Wallace in the field goal unit here for Jason Negro's crew. That is a big win for the Kahuku defense, especially after the call that went against them for 15 yards. Put it already and put them in a bad spot. Wallace will hold it. Marcus Lee will kick it. Was the Long Beach Press Telegram punter and kicker of the year last season. Marcus Lee, two of three this year. From 22, Marcus Lee. Got it. Lee's great. Top 30 kicker in California. We're talking those Chris Saylor camps. That hard work paying off. From 22 out. And the game's first with points. Okahuku got bit by a big penalty, which was iffy based on what we've seen here. But St. John Bosco, what a great drive here for them as took nearly half the time off the clock. It's Marcus Lee with his eighth career field goal. Knock that one through. You know, I would also say it's a win for the Red Raiders holding this powerful offense to only three, especially after that devastating uh, call against them that put the ball deep into their own territory. Let's see what they got here. Manulele Ayu had a kick return for touchdown against St. Louis the last time we saw him in game-breaking fashion. And the ball kind of blew off the tee here for Ignacio Fonseca for the Braves. A solid soccer athlete for the Braves team, too. Kind of a tertiary type of place kicker. He had a heavy leg on the kickoffs, though. That wind that knocked the ball down, we can't feel it here in the booth. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> and again, the ball tipped over. Are they going to have a holder here? Yes, they will. Deshaun Schaefer, the freshman. Schaefer was an offer from Central Michigan, by the way. So even like the young guys on this team. That is so old school when you see a guy holding the ball. <laughs> like that. Ignacio Fonseca looking on after it. Hawaii teams have learned not to kick two Kahuku return men. This is playable and returnable. From the, around the 10-yard line is Manulele Ayu. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ayu still up. To midfield. The tackle by Jacob Holmes. The Hoku with great starting position. How many times have we seen Kahuku on special teams do it up big? And here they are changing field position for the offense. Manulele Ayu takes it to the 49. A 40-yard run back. Sets him up in midfield. The Zippy starting lines up at the offensive line. Punivai, Ross Evans, Panama, Saluni as well. They're going to have to be the real workhorses here tonight if they want to have any kind of success. Off the run by Fono T. He's knocked down there. Peyton Woodyard helping in along with Epi Sitanielli Usumali'i making the tackle. Hitton Woodyard, the Alabama commit. SEC bound Alabama, pretty much in every top five recruiting class grades. After the run of one. by Mosa will give it up the middle. And there is Fonoti again. Kanai Kikahuna Lopes, the linebacker, makes the tackle. Kanai, who grew up in Wa'anae, his grandmother wanted to pass along a message saying how proud she is of Kanai. The family's in the house as well. So he's got a lot of Hawaii ties here for Kikahuna Lopes. A lot of Wa'anae people in the house here on the North Shore tonight. <laughs> the Utah commit. And a fairly fast recruitment there for Lopes over a span of a month before he essentially made that commitment to play at Utah. Here comes third down. Through the traffic. That is going to be about two yards shy 
of the first down. It's Tungle by Lowell Mosa to keep it. And now some awards being shared as Kahuku gets a little vocal. And if you're Kahuku, you want to hold on to this football. So do you go for it here on fourth and two? There's no way they're punting this, right? No way. I don't know now. They switch out personnel. Kahuku's got to get more guys on the field as there are mad scramble. It's almost like a fire drill right now. So Fono T to take this snap with Panama next to him. The play clock running down inside of 10. It's at five. But they're gonna pause it here for a second. Bosco, this is your official sideline warning. Sideline warning. Yeah, sideline side warning. warning. Back it up. And that's why the clock stopped. And that it is a break for the Red Raiders here that were scrambling, trying to get the right personnel out. You got to get out of that white painted area for the safety of not just the coaches and the players, but for the officials as well. So it's just a warning, no penalty yardage assessed. Fun OT. Fourth down. Oh, early movement as they shift out. Try and draw them off. Time out. Time out. Time out. Kohuku. Their first charge. Good attempt from Kohuku. Better job for the Braves to say discipline. Didn't get the jump. But decision time here. Time out. Side. Will the tie turn here for Kohuku? With fourth down coming up. Three and a half remaining. You got to go for this. Fourth, fourth and two. Defending national champs. They put Tungvalu Amosa back out there, and they go empty. They only need two yards to extend the drive. They Not send Fonomoana quickly off the field. Fono team motions. Carvalho motions. Tungvalu Amosa gets the first down. The chains move. He gets tackled by Sir Tyler Thomas. Tay Lockett helps in as well. Gutsy call and it pays off here for Big Red. Yeah, I like the aggressiveness of this call here. Everybody's thinking possible quarterback draw, but not a quarterback lead with uh, Fono T leading the way. Remember in the beginning, I talked about how Tuli Tangovailoa Mosa can really hurt you with his legs. There you see it right there as a runner. He followed Fili Saluni, the offensive lineman, this 12th grader, to help drive him down there. Fresh set of downs. Who put in a lot of eye candy type plays to maybe try and get Bosco guessing. I'm gonna whistle. Delay a game. Offense number 12. Five yard penalty still, first down. That's what happens when you have all that eye candy in there. You almost lose track of the play clock. Kahuku, so after this game, will have road games against Nanakuli and Moanalua in OIA Group A play. As they continue to try and get their three-peat of a state championship. And Minilani looked darn good last night against St. Louis in dominant fashion. And Campbell, for that matter, last night as well over Punahou. On the 38, Tamabalo Mosa throws this one. And this is caught by Manutai. So Aiden Manutai is going to play both ways here tonight. Able to get the catch. Manutai seems like he's been playing varsity forever. He's only a junior. One of those two-way guys. The, the, the skilled players that can play two ways for Kuhuku. Always outstanding. Let's catch of the season here for Aiden Manutai, who has offers from UH, Arizona, Oregon, Utah State, Utah Tech, and Washington State. Tango by Loamosa, flings this one out, caught by Carvalho, turns it up the field, Mano Carvalho brought down there, Kamori House finally gets the tackle, Gohuku cooking here in the red zone. I really like what they're doing here. Remember, we talked about Tui as a game manager type that can deal the cards like a point guard. 
because he's so athletic. Get the ball into the hands of some playmakers. These quick, the quick passing game. Run the ball when you have to. Uh, that's the recipe for success. First down at the 13. Tumble by Almosa will take it himself. And he slides in there. Tay Lockett, the Arkansas commit, a 10th grade of the head, more than 40 offers under his belt. Makes the stop here on the senior Tumble by Almosa. 40 offers. That is just crazy. Smart play by Tuli. Tumbavai Loamosa, who opted to kind of stay home and built chemistry with his offense. He didn't attend too many camps. Then the transfer from Kapole. And 100 seconds here to go in the first period. If one will see again, he gets knocked down by Kingston Viliamu Asa, the Notre Dame commit. He's able to make the tackle. Those two guys are the X-Factors. Viliamu Asa in the middle, patrolling and charged with stopping the run game. And then Fono T, big strong back, gonna try to move the pile here. What a key matchup that is. St. Bosco only had one drive, got a field a lot of it. This is the first drive for Kahuku tonight, and it's play number nine. Load up the line. Come by Loamosa, pressure, just puts it up, Carvalho, incomplete, marker down, Frankie Edwards the third, guarding him. The University of Idaho commit, might add some contact there on Mana Carvalho. Tuli off of his back foot, but throws a nice ball. Well, Edwards got there early, got his hands around the waist of Carvalho. That was close, but... Interference, defense, half the distance, still third down. Remember, pass interference is not an automatic first down, and so it's third and about a yard. It's essentially four down territory here for Kahuku. Fono T will take the direct snap. Fono T seeking space. Lean four, close to the first down stick as Sir Tyler Thomas flies in for the tackle. And it is a first down, it's first and goal. Jumbo personnel there with Fono T in the backfield. Probably waited a little long here because he got tackled from the side. You gotta hit that up right now. Wedge block up the middle. And a flag down on the far sideline. Okay, sideline warning on Kahuku. Kahuku, this is your official sideline warning. So each team with a sideline warning, the next one could cost some penalty yards now. Sterling Carvalho. Okay, this is a great opportunity for our program. Statewide stage, nationwide stage as well. And the clock still ticking here as we approach 10 seconds to go. And looks like they'll take it to the second period. So St. John Bosco with 47 yards on their opening drive. Got a 22-yard field goal in the process from Marcus Lee. The That's the only difference. Through a fairly fast-moving first 12 minutes. What a time to be alive. Kohuku at St. John Bosco. On an area. But there's nothing like football up north. As we begin the second period, it's Fono T to the end zone and in for the Kohuku touchdown. Got a marker down in the area of where the line was. And it's a hold on the Red Raiders. Again, I like the play call, not the holding call, but I like the play holding. call. Offense number 50. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. It's on Panama. On the right side here of this line, big 5-0. -oh. 
engages there. And he's hooking onto Komori House. He's trying to change direction, but he's still hanging on and just didn't let go enough. It's too bad. I mean, that was a nice drive, and I love the way they use the jumbo package to get down there. Not only that, but usually the jumbo package is straight up the gut. That time, Fono T able to take it outside. That was well, well done, except for the hold. Puts it to the 13-yard line, which actually gives more passing room here for Tungavailoa Mosa, who's back in. Tungavailoa Mosa, the pressure is coming. He will stay in bounds. <laughs> Kamori House finally escorts him to the sideline. What balance to him that sideline for Tuli Tungavailoa Mosa. Great job, Tuli here, the cousin of Tua and Taulia Tungavailoa. Uh, showing great movement here as he traipses down the sideline. There's his brother, Myron Tungabailoa-Mosa. Phenomenal athlete during his time over at Kapolei, Notre Dame. Younger bro doing big things here his senior year, second in goal now. And the 10, he'll take it himself. He got by Jordan Lockhart, trying to find the edge. Peyton Woodyard, wow! A Bama boomer of a defensive stop. You know, I really like the way they're approaching this here, using Thule in the run game. His legs are, are forcing the St. John Bosco defense, which they did really well on that play to defend all 11 guys across the board. And just this different formations, they come up with the jumbo package, then they come in empty, forces the defense to defend the entire field. Touchdown taken away because of a holding penalty on Kahuku. They got two chances to either tie or take here in this drive. Fono T gives it to Mata Carvalho. Can he race him to the end zone? Yes, he can! Kahuku, touchdown! Wow, that was a perfect call. Are you kidding me? What a call. That, that is the first time I have ever seen a reverse off of a jumbo package. At first, it looked like Fono T was going to do like a jump pass a la Derek Henry or Tim Tebow, but the reverse. Wow, that was great. Manoa Kahalipun has only missed one extra point this season 20 of 21 the flag down false start offense number 60 five yard penalty the charge will be from the eight able hold p the guilty party there so important to calm your emotions down it is a marathon type of game Carvalho rushes in for the score. And that one's good. Almost a mirror image of what happened last year against number three, St. Francis. Mata Carvalho. With his first rushing touchdown of 2023, and Kohuku has the lead. You can take all the great OC16 action with you on the go with the Spectrum News app. All the latest local sports, news, and weather that matter most to you. Download it now. It's on the App Store or Google Play. Red Raider Nation stretches far and wide all across the globe. Special shout out to our friends over on Spectrum News 1 watching us over in Los Angeles. Thanks for having us a part of your Saturday evening. Thanks for staying up late with us too, by the way. As Kahuku jumps out in front, 7-3. Mana Carvalho rushes in for the touchdown. And that was just the first drive, by the way, of Kohuku that extended from the first into the beginning part of the second. Got a flag down on the kick. And somebody moved early here for Kohuku. But if Kohuku is going to have a chance, they Encroachment need. Encroachment kicking team. Oh, Five yard penalty. Can the, 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 try, the kick will be from the 35. But they need to control the clock. Time of possession has to be in their favor. Put it back at the 35-yard line. St. John Bosco 
We'll have Santa Margarita coming up Friday the 29th. Then they'll take on Servite, but the modern day game is the one that they're circling. But Jason Negro has always said, you know, we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. Again, it's hard to not recognize, like, hey, boys, we're going to cool play you know, number one, at least for now in the country, in four weeks. The building blocks are there. He's surrounded himself with the right pieces to build a successful program in the near decade and a half. The school that he graduated at. The dream job here for Negro. We're going to continue. As Tomic will take it back. Wow, what a special teams tackle. Manu Lele Ayu showing off some of that track speed. Not only as a return guy, but as a cover guy. You got to love these special teams. Mavens. They want to come down and play hard on special teams. They just make all the difference on your team. Let's give you the full story here on Caleb Sanchez. Remember, he had to wait behind guys like Pierce Jackson, now at Louisville who also waited behind Caden Hauser, who's over at Michigan State. Jason Negro saying, I think the biggest thing that Caleb learned was to just be patient. He dedicated himself into the system and really emerged as a leader. As Cameron Jones runs it through, but a penalty marker's down. Chauncey Alou made that tackle. Number 44, Chauncey Alou. Penalty marker on the field. Cameron Jones ran for... Nearly 1,100 yards last year and 18 touchdowns. Helped lead the school to a fourth straight CIF Open title. But the UCLA commit, who had other looks from Cal, Michigan State, San Jose State, Oregon, UNLV, and Texas A&M. Loves the vibe over at UCLA. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense number 60. 15 yards in the previous spot. Still first down. Now Matthew Perdue. There's only one senior on that offensive line, by the way. It's number 71, King Large, who's an SMU commit. With the greatest name in high school sports. <laughs> King Large. 71, right side of your screen, right there. He's the he only senior. Large. Train job Bosco prides itself on its strength and conditioning program, too, in preparation. Sanchez throws here for Daniel Odom. And the ball might have come out. Kohuku says they have it, and they do. Sione Pasi recovered it here for Kohuku. So Daniel Odom took it there, and in a bevy of bodies, LeBron Williams might have forced this out. Number 90 here for Kohuku. It's going to be close. Yep, Williams jarred it loose. And that's a hustle play by a defensive lineman redirecting to the ball, creating a turnover. Unreal. And this is exactly the kind of game Kohuku wants to play. A, a, cha a ball control offense, uh, turnover, special teams, setting up field position. This is the prototype game for Kohuku Red Raiders. Every drive magnified in its importance in a game like this, even though it doesn't affect each of these teams' league standings. But St. John Bosco, gonna hang with the likes of IMG Academy, modern day in that poll, Bishop Gorman in the top five as well. Option, Tango by Lomosa. They all run and get tripped up. Good job there from Jordan Lockhart. The Texas A&M commit, fourth on the team in tackles this year for the four-star backer that formerly committed to Ole Miss, then settled on Texas A&M. And Thule might have more rushing attempts before the night is over than passing attempts. For a solid run of about five. And uh, Chris Troutman, the umpire, a bit shaken up there. He seems to be okay. Second down and five. Carvalho's in motion. Watch out. Pitch back to him. Carvalho looks downfield. Throws downfield. It is broken up. Intended for Kamoku. Frankie Edwards. Knocked it down. A flag is down in the area where Carvalho threw the pass.
I really like the play call here. And Carvalho Ooh. gets <laughs> leveled. Kamal Johnson. Komoku in a bevy of bodies off the back of Edwards. Johnson right there. Oh, right there. Right to the head. Head to head. Personal foul. Roughing a passer. Defense number two. Half the distance. Automatic. First down. Now that was an obvious head to head collision there. Right to the head. And Carvalho, thankfully for Kahuku fans, popped right back up. He's okay. Drinks it first down just inside the 15-yard line right now. What the intensity we've seen so far here from both teams. I mean, this is a preseason game, but they're playing for keeps here. <laughs> they're bringing it. Nine and a half to go till the half. Fono T in the back. It's interesting to see where they're going to spot this ball because if it was half the distance, then the spot should be, I think, a yard closer, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe a yard back. Like they sell on the 14 yard line. 402. Malai 402. And 402. Meets Lance Olivinos and Dylan Rickenbacker. Great job by Lance Olivinos. The best way to stop a power run game in the jumbo package is to get penetration and there you see from the back side Olive Enos gets his hand around his both hands around the back of the jersey of Fonoti and just kind of pulled him back Tampa Bailo Amosa back in 2 of 2 for 25 yards through the air so far here in the first half now throws it quick, end zone. Oh my goodness, nearly caught off the back of Frankie Edwards, but it jarred loose. Tiso Komoku, pumping around the waist. This would have been wicked. <laughs> wow, that was, this would have been absolutely amazing. <laughs> that would have been like a magician. And because he's going to the ground, he has to survive the ground, which he did not, and that's why the ball jarred loose. What else are we going to see here tonight? <laughs> Third and eight coming up. Kahuku 69 yards of offense so far, and a Kahuku called timeout. We also have a television. 846 remaining here in the half, and Kahuku looking to extend their 7-3 lead. Sports. For all your special achievements, call Ryan. Mike's Engraving and Trophies, they are located in IA. We'll hand out an impact player plaque. Special player for each team by the end of tonight on a gorgeous Saturday night near the North Shore. Here in Kahuku, the town shuts down for any game. It's extra special here tonight with number three in the country, St. John Bosco in town. Tumble by Lomosa to Carvalho, climbs the ladder, pulls it in for a credible touchdown. What a crab. <laughs> My goodness. Mana Carvalho. Wow. Talk about the money man on this team going up and Fighting for that, high pointing the ball. What an athlete this guy is. He just, he's too much. Crazy. Kahale Puna off the hands of Carvalho. Now he dashes the other way. Now he throws it for the conversion. It's Amor Jr. Oh, oh my gosh. Home field advantage 
is real up north. First the touchdown from Carvalho. Rush for a score. Caught for a score. And then Houdini is in the house. The magic of Mana Carvalho. He's done almost everything here tonight. And the magic continues here for Mana Carvalho. Remember, he started his football career at Kahuku as a water boy. He spent some time in Utah growing up. He's always smiling and he's always willing to do what is good for the betterment of the entire team. And that's why he's so loved in this community. Of course, we saw his brother Kai Kai Carvalho the last couple of years on the to those state championships. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, he's only a junior. He is just on another level. But Negro said this game was not going to be easy. And Kahuku has made that point very clear. Returnable kick from the 16ers. Lock it. Lock it. Stutter step. And right into the arms of Shannon Kano and Madden Soliai. You know, at the beginning, we talked about what went wrong for Kahuku last week. They had six turnovers at modern day, playing the number one team. Here, they have played their type of game. They're limiting turnovers. They're creating some on their own. And this is Kahuku football. So for, if you're seeing John Bosco, you're going to have to answer here before the crowd starts to get even wilder here. Sanchez has been perfect so far. 5 of 5, 34 yards. Hasn't taken the deep home run shot just yet. Short route caught there by Stacy Dobbins. Grabbed there by Madden Soliai. Madden Soliai, who had six block punts last year. That is an obscene number. <laughs> yes, it is. So they have them on special teams. We're talking the track season as well. That's a career. Mm -hmm. And movement up on the line. On well, the defensive side first. Ball start. See. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty. Second up. It's the tight end, the, the 245 pound senior, William McKissick. With a big tight end with the early jump here. Yeah, maximum put him on him. Saying, hey, he's the one. Second and 11 for Sanchez and the Braves. Sanchez caught Dobbins. Held on to there by Madden Soliai. Catch there for Dobbins. He had 100 catches. A little more than 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Led the state in receptions last season. Right off the line, he's tough to beat, and he's making things look effortless here for the Braves. So he's going to have to be the main guy here in this offense. And you're right, there is Dobbins again, there's Solia again. That's, so a, that's a matchup to watch. That's his fifth tackle now here already for Solia. And Sanchez has completed eight straight passes, his first eight of the game. And everything's been pretty simple here in this look for Jason Negro's offense. They will feed it up the middle, and Cameron Jones, like he's pushing the sled in practice, showing those strong legs. And the marker's down. Cameron Jones lost his shoe. I mean, this guy is built like a truck at 6'2", 235, and he's trucking people here. Man. Right through maximum for Norm Moana did Cameron Jones. Holding. Offense number 60. Then not penalty from the fall. Second down. Oh, that's tough. It's on Matt Purdue. Jason Negro said he wanted to say and see progress with this team. And Coach Negro saying, and part of that is just playing disciplined football. The momentum swinging in the direction of Kahuku so far here. Caleb Sanchez firing in a window. It's intercepted. It's in and Marutai. Marutai. With a cutback and he's good. 
for the touchdown. A sea of red erupting, and why not? Aiden Manutai read that all the way. And again, we talk about what kind of game does Kahuku want to play. They want to play close to the vest. They want to create turnovers and score on turnovers like, like they do. They, they take back interceptions, punt kick returns, scoop and score. 54 yards to the Holly. 22 to 3 over number three in the country right now. Aiden Manutai. Remember, he started his career as a freshman over at Mililani. Rebel Squad product. They love him here in this community. He's worked so hard. Six interceptions a year ago. He took two of them to the house. And now he gets his first pick, six of this season. And Kahuku has scored 15 points off of two St. John Bosco turnovers. And that was an excellent play call. Solo Soliai, the defensive coordinator, coordinator, they called a twist. And big number 11, Elijah Fuiava came outside, pressured Sanchez, and that ball thrown earlier than he would want to, when, that, that, earlier than he wanted to. And man, Malutai read that all the way. It's the second interception of the season here for Sanchez. So he completed his first eight passes of the night. Pass number nine ended up as a pick six here for Aiden Manutai. Lockett has to track it in the lights, and it'll be a touchback. And the Braves uncharacteristically. A really good team that came to Hawaii, and everyone knew it. You know, sometimes when you're a great team and, you know, there's a lofty standard to hold up to, you know, the time zone difference, you're playing in Hawaii, you're at Turtle Bay, uh, it's very difficult to get to stay dialed in. You're, you're in paradise, and it's a great experience. Families are here. You can see the families in the crowd cheering on their kids. I mean, they came with a huge contingent. Uh, right now, though, it's not a vacation at all for the Bosco Braves. Cameron Jones, the back here. He gets the call. Runs right over Malaki Soliai Tui. Ben Roberts helps make the tackle. Man, you mentioned that he's as big as a truck. I'll tell you what. Beep, beep, watch out. He is physical. Sanchez, oh, nearly picked there by Chauncey Alo. Yeah, these Kohuku linebackers and DBs, they're not the biggest, but man, do they spend a lot of time conditioning. Box jumps getting up there and nearly got a one-handed interception for Alo. Yeah, Alo just a sophomore. If he hung on to that, he'd still be running. Halfway home here in the second. Third down. Run it for it. Got a first down there with Cameron Jones. Talk about the strength of Cameron Jones. I mean, obviously, you look at his legs, and he put so much work into that awesome weight room, by the way, at St. John Bosco. Deadlift 600. He's benching more than 315. He power cleans 300. In fact, when he made his commitment to UCLA, the guy was holding a bazooka. <laughs> How rugged is that? Sanchez rolls out and fires, and this is roll to catch. Nice grab there from Tommy Maher, but a penalty flag down in the area of the pass. Ira Morris went right after the quarterback, Sanchez. This could tack on 15. Personal fall, roughing the pass Personal to defense fall, number 19. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. What a catch by Tommy Maher. Just sliding his fingers between the turf and the football. And a much sharper route runner. The Braves marching down the field now, building momentum, trying to get a score before the half. 
Sanchez. Lofts one up. It is fought for by Madden Williams. And a marker down as Madden Suliai got to him. That was Madden, Madden on Madden. <laughs> How many times in a football game we have two guys going at it both named Madden? I mean, that's got to be a first. <laughs> and that ball hung up there forever. You know, Madden Soliai actually, in hindsight, when he watches the tape, he's going to say, darn it, why didn't I go just clean break for the football? Because he arrived early. That ball hung up there. Likely a face mask. Personal fall. Face mask, defense number 21. Face mask penalty against 15 yards added to the end of the run. Results of the first down. A clear penalty there. And Madden Williams, I'm telling you, he's got some strong hands, man. In fact, his dad, we used to show him videos of guys like Devontae Adams and Julio Jones, Ed Reed and Sean Taylor. Garnered a lot of attention and praise since he was young and handled it in such a calm demeanor. And Madden Williams has offers from Arizona State and Georgia Tech as well. Bright future in that receiving core in a timeout. 516 remaining. And the two 15 yard penalties really helps the Braves here. Mistake prone early on with the turnovers. Meantime, here for Kahuku, it's so ambitious when you try to load up your schedule and the whole philosophy of Kahuku, you know, if we're going to be at our best, we need to play the best. And they were humbled for sure against modern day last week but with the six turnovers and losing by 47 it kind of opens your eyes of what you need to work on and they've had great week of practices and that hard work paying off right now yeah no doubt and here's a reigning schedule we'll have Kuku and Campbell on Spectrum X cast congratulations to Darren Johnson the head coach of the Campbell Sabres Kohuku alum proud Kohuku alum by the way As they knocked off Punahou last night a couple of road games after this matchup here Game on Spectrum X cast coming your way in October. Sanchez and the offense go back to work. Here comes Jones. Cameron Jones, untouchable. What balance to tumble his way inside the 10. Big Cameron Jones rumbling through. He took a big hit on the hip and just kept rumbling. Eight a carry. Deepest penetration here of the night for the Braves. Encroachment. Defense, number five. Half the distance. First down. In the St. John Bosco huddle is number 42 for the Braves. And that's Matt Moussa. So Matt Moussa was a ball boy at Mililani. He's having a great career over at St. John Bosco. He's one of the fullbacks here. Here's 42 readjusted. Handoff wide open. It is Jones in for a brave touchdown. Sir Tyler Thomas, Matt Muisau leading the way, and the Braves get their first touchdown of the night. And going forward, Cameron Jones has to be the focal point of your offense. What a specimen he is, and what a powerful runner this guy is. This one with a flag down was deflected. Marcus Lee. Try to put that one through, but two flags came out. Let's see where this will land. Personal fall, hurdling defense. Half the distance, the try will be from the one and a half. He just puts it a tad closer here for the Braves. Down 13, Cameron Jones back in with Caleb Sanchez. This has to be a no-brainer here who's getting the ball.
Here comes Cameron Jones. Right behind Sanchez. Five extra men over the top. Cameron Jones trying to drive his legs. Can he get in? Extra effort. He's short. Wow. Zayden Maritani and Maximum Fono Moana shutting the door. But that drive for Cameron Jones, terrific. This just shy though. Man, look at the power. I mean, how many, how many red jerseys wow. does it take to bring down big Cameron Jones? Remember last year against St. Francis, St. Francis had a couple of fourth down attempts inside the 10 that was shut down by the goal line defense of Kahuku. Here's the first one for the boys in red. What a great hit by number 10, Fia Toa, coming up and cleaning house at the end there. 4.35 remaining. It's got to feel good here if you're saying John Bosco, though, right? You get a field goal seemingly forever ago, and now you finally have something you can kind of hang your hat on. Still a lot more work to be done. Exactly, yeah. You know, one of the things that's troubling, though, if you're a St. John Bosco Braves fan is that a lot of the yardage was aided by penalties. They had the two big 15 yarders that definitely aided the drive. Uh, they did not look sharp until Cameron Jones started carrying the rock. He's got to be the focal point. He's off the touchback. Cameron Jones. Watching on the iPad to see what he can work on. And we got a heck of a matchup coming your way on Friday as Punahou will take on Kamehameha. It's the longest rivalry in the nation in terms of games recognized by the NFHS. It's Punahou and Kamehameha on Spectrum XCast and the Spectrum News app. 435 remaining. Kohuku. Remember, they won the toss. And they defer, so they get the ball to start quarter three. Typically in these situations, they like to milk out the clock. We'll see how the offensive play calling will be here for the Red Raiders. Begins with an option pitch out. Look out, here comes Carvalho. Carvalho still moving. Finally brought down out of the pile, Lance Olive Enos there. Good sportsmanship after the pull up from Jordan Lockhart. There's almost a face mask at the end there. And the penalty marker's down. Nothing there, nothing there. Just good maneuverability here from right there. Mm. Could, have, could have been a face mask, not sure. Also, the blocking was very physical as they were trying to free up Monte Carvalho. And 14 combined penalties so far here in the half. Nine for Kahuku. After the play, personal foul, personal offense foul. number 13, 15 yards, first down. Takalawano gets caught for the flag there. And now if you're Kahuku, this is a danger area. You don't want to turn it over here. You don't want to get crazy and try to do anything that would cause you to give up the ball in this short zone area. From the 15-yard line, Tamavailo Mosa right through the middle. And right to Epi Sitanieli, Usumali'i, and Komori House. Komori House, a Washington commit, a four-star linebacker. He's third on the team in tackles this year for the three-year starter for this great St. John Bosco program. And he had a buffet of schools to choose from, by the way. He chose Washington over 11 other schools, which included Texas and Auburn. The Braves builds champions. So does Kahuku. <laughs> There's a palace of champions 
And you feel it when you step on campus here up north. Tango Bailo Amosa shifting. Now firing, launching Carvalho. Got it. Right at the 40. The pick of the 24. Tamal Johnson made the tackle. And the chains move here for the Red Raiders. Man, what, how do you cover this guy? I mean, the ball thrown only where Cavallo can get it. <laughs> and his ability to adjust in the air to the football, amazing. <laughs> See the numbers for Carvalho, who's thrown for a conversion, rushed for a touchdown, and caught a touchdown. Malay Funoti the back. Funoti chugging along to the 45 yard line, gain of four. The tackle there by Kingston Nombrado. Part of a defensive line that's got a bunch of talented young guys here. Well, with two minutes left, I mean, you're going to have to make a decision. Are you trying to score here? Uh, you're just trying to run the clock out because. I can see the run here by Fonoti, but you're going to really have to hurry if you want to get into field goal position. They've only hit one field goal this year from 20 yards out. They're well out of field goal range. They need a heck of a lot of yards right now. And here comes Tamovailo Amosa, chased by Kamari House. Got by him, but hung on to by Peyton Woodyard. It's to the plus side of the field at the 45-yard line gain of nine. And, and when Kahuku's offense is playing smart, they're not fumbling, they're not throwing interceptions, they're not forcing stuff, they're playing their game, they can move the chains, get down the field, and score with any team. Hawaii graduate, 1993, Sterling Carvalho looking on. Been a Red Raider all his life in one form or another. The coach as a player. We're inside of two minutes. Design run up the middle. That's not going anywhere. Great job to plug up the holes there by Kingston Viliamuasa. The team's co-leader in tackles this year. And maybe the most dynamic player on the field. Here for the Braves. Jordan Lockhart also there at 6'2", 227. Not a slouch either. Those two guys. Very talented. That's a solid one-two combination. <laughs> it's almost an embarrassment of riches, according to coach Jason Negro. Second down and nine. Pressure off the edge. Got rid of it quick. And underneath is Malai Fonoti. Fono T gets tackled there from behind by Peyton Woodard and Jordan Lockhart. Great job of play calling here, mixing it up. Quarterback run, short passes, quarterback rolling outside, getting the ball to Carvalho. Just a great job here of mixing things up. But with 49 seconds, a lot of time off the clock here. And no timeouts here for the Red Raiders. Five in the pattern. Tongovailo Amosa to Carvalho in and out of his hands. That may not have been a bad play. You know, it stops the clock. Carvalho trying to run uh, before he had full possession and not a lot of room to run anyhow. So it's kind of a positive out of a negative. He's waiting to turn it up the field. Field goal from here would be about 49 yards. This is really on the fringe of Kahalapuna's range. Goku thinking six right now. Second and ten. Tamovailo Mosa just has to throw it away. Good pressure there from Tamal Johnson. Maxwell, Amasio applied the pressure as well. And that's a tough throw for a right-handed quarterback to roll to his left. I know you want to change the platform. Uh, you know, you want to change the launch point uh, so that the defense can't just zero in on one spot. But what a tough throw for any quarterback. You see his numbers. Who has two plays to try and burn 30 seconds? This is third and ten. 
Trying to extend the drive as well. St. John Bosco got all three of their timeouts still. Underneath Carvalho. Oh, he ain't going anywhere. And this ball is out. The ball came out. Tiauli forced it. What are they going to rule it? Did the ball come out before he was down? What a play by number 15, Jordan Lockhart, who reads this all the way. And the punch from behind there from Tao'al Tiauli. Yeah, this ball is out. Illegal shift. Offense. Illegal that shift. That penalty declined. The Red Raiders. The results of the play, first down. And so it is. Brave ball. What a defensive play there from Lockhart. Man, this cat is a player. <laughs> Tia Uli with the punch out. And Amasio got the recovery. Lockhart had 60 tackles last year in the national championship season for the Braves. And the Braves have a lot of options right now. A lot of weapons and speedsters on the field, but they have three timeouts and 23 seconds to work with. Sanchez is 10 of 12 for 70 yards and an interception. A yeah, straight give here to Sylvester who slips and goes down. And the, ball and the, the Braves, Braves just might cut their losses Chelsea and take Sylvester. this to the locker room. Gain of five yards, we have second down and five ball on the 40 yard so line. they get one more playoff here. On the hold them, and that's the half. And what a first half, huh? <laughs> wow. You know, when people looked at this game on paper, they said, Kahuku, number three team in the country, they got beat by number one bad last week, no chance. And that's why looking at comparative scores, not really accurate. Insignificant, you're right. Kahuku silencing a lot of cynics and critics right now. The home team on top by 13. Mana Carvalho, the money man so far through the first 24 minutes. It's been fast, it's been physical, it's been intense. What would you expect? You're in Kahuku, y'all. Red Raiders up 13 on OC 16. If you're just joining us, where you been? All the action here up north in Kahuku. Marcus Lee on the opening drive for the Braves. Gets a 22-yard field goal to make it 3-0. Then Mana Carvalho showing off the Jets. The speedster to the end zone. 7-3 Kahuku. Then we saw him rush. How about seeing him catch? How about the leap? How about the grab? Mana Carvalho from... 12 yards out, 15 to three, after they would convert this two-point conversion. As he hooks up with Almuha Jr., they're up a dozen, and Kahuku goes crazy. And they'll go even crazier. Sanchez found a window, but then he found Aiden Manutak. Threw it the other way, first pick six of the season here. For the kid who had six interceptions last year for the Red Raiders. They're not to be outdone. Cameron Jones gets the first Braves touchdown of the night from two yards out. They would miss the two-point conversion, and that's how we got to this 22-9 score. And Coach, these are the Jack in the Box halftime numbers. Very even rush yards. I mean, pass yards. Are you kidding me? One yard apart. I think the big difference got to be the turnovers, the two turnovers, especially the pick six. Uh, and the penalty, 10 for 90 for Kohuku. That last touchdown drive, although Cameron Jones did come on as a runner, heavily aided by the three big penalties on Kohuku that pretty much ushered them in uh, into scoring position. Back here upstairs with Coach Darren Hernandez and J.B. Bender, Felipe Ojastro. How do you think the lines have played here so far through the first two quarters, the trenches? Yeah, I mean, you, you didn't hear much. Uh, there was no sacks. There was only one tackle for loss by Bosco. Both lines uh, evenly matched and nothing really, I mean, no leakage, uh, no pressure from either team. Both quarterbacks getting rid of the ball quickly, which is part of the plan here, but uh, both not under duress. I mean, wow. Great, great line play overall by both offensive lines. It's been a fun first two quarters so far, and Kahuku trying to control the clock in the third quarter because they get the ball to kick off the second half. So the cheerleaders get to meet each other as you take a look at beautiful Chinaman's hat. Well, 
the emergence of Tuli Tungvaluwa Mosa and how he has progressed over the course of this 2023 campaign. It's had its valleys, but it's had more peaks than anything. And a pretty steady showing here from a senior that's very respected here with this program. No doubt about it. You know, last week the offense forced a lot of things. They had six turnovers. This week they're playing smart football. They're playing Kahuku football. They're taking care of the football. They're running. Uh, they're setting up play action, doing a marvelous job. And it has to be sustainable here for Kahuku. Remember, they had the lead over number three from Maryland, St. Francis, last year. Had that evaporate. Can they hang on here in the next 24 minutes? Well, if this guy continues his hot level of play, good things can happen here for the Red Raiders. He's just been awesome, not just this season. Remember, he had a broken collarbone two years ago in the 2021 campaign. Worked hard, rehab, had a great sophomore campaign, and now Monica Carvalho in this junior season lights out. Yeah, I mean, he has to be the guy that will carry this team, offense and defense. Uh, do not throw in his area. He is such a dangerous ball hawk. And then his ability to go up and get the football high point, uh, the guy is just tremendous. He's just out of this world. He's a magician. He, he, he's a magic. <laughs> 71 passing yards for Tungovai Lomosa. 50 of them to Mana Carvalho on four catches. He's got another touchdown as well. And Kohuku has a 22-9 lead. Waikiki Beach, glorious night in the 808. And up north, it's Kahuku in Carlton E. Weimer Field. Treated to a show. They opened about 2,500 tickets, and they sold out immediately right out of the gate. And they've been treated to a phenomenal game so far, 22 to 9. You see Tuli Tungvaluwa Omosa, right? So we talked about his progress over his career, third year in the varsity team. Tonight's his 13th start of that career. Grew up in Eva Beach. At the time, as he was heading into varsity ball at Coppola, he was one of three potential quarterbacks for the Hurricanes. And then growing up, he played for the Sabres. In fact, played against the legendary EA Park. Big boys teams. And for him, Staying locked and focus has been one of his biggest attributes. Because every tongue of Iloa Amosa that we have met, just completely humble. Great, great people, well raised. Uh, Selfless. Well, yeah, the, the late Tuli Amosa, uh, his father, mm -hmm. good friend of mine, great guy, played high school and college with him. A uh, humble man of God, good man, and raised some. Tremendous children. Uh, he and his wife, uh, pastors, just pillars of the community and uh, great kids. The work not done yet here for either team. As St. John Bosco and head coach Jason Negro. You know, when he graduated from St. John Bosco in the early 90s, Love being a part of the program, the way it shaped him as a man, as a coach. And he said one of the joys of coaching at St. John Bosco is that you get to have a bigger part of their life. Yeah, there is a football factory out there. But we has done for the kids and building character and making them not just good players, but good men. It's one of the riches of his job and the benefits of that. And you know, even a game like this where they're down at halftime, this is a, an opportunity to teach these young men about character. You know, you're on the road, you're in a hostile environment, in a, in a beautiful setting, but uh, the, the other team came to play and you're a great football team defending national champions. How are you gonna come back? Uh, that's a teachable moment for these young men as well. CJ Wallace. Number five kicker in the country for the class of 2026. He's a sophomore. He's number one in that class in California. It's a clean ball. And this one goes out of bounds. Man, that thing had touchback written all over it, and it took a funny hop out of bounds. And so Kahuku can opt to take it at the 35. And that would probably be their worst starting field position on offense as they've been averaging starting at the 40 
47, 45, 50 yard line. So kick out again, of bounds by the kicking team. Receiving team has chosen to take it at the 35. First down. Look, if, if Kahuku can put together a drive here and score a touchdown, they could really make things tough for the Braves. Braves fans try to get loud and juice up this defense, which had its moments in that second period. Well, looking like that highly touted defense entering here tonight. So Kahuku manages the play calling now for the next 24 minutes. Begins with a funnel T run to the right. Away from Viliamu Asa, who had to chase him out of bounds. Say it all the time. Kuku typically wins games in the third quarter. Gets big leads, controls the clock, and manages the game. This is a great play call. Fono T, who makes his living between the tackles that time, surprises everyone with a beautiful run on the outside. 315-pound bencher in the weight room. Was second in the Division One Open in rush yards and touchdowns last season. At 810 and 14 touchdowns. For the run of 11, it's first and 10 for the 46. There was movement on the near side. It was Ikaika. False start. False start. Off the number 13. Five yard penalty, first down. He flinched. And the key is once you're set, you can't move. You know, sometimes you can move and shift or move and go into motion. And sometimes the offensive coordinator will have a check, a check with me, and everybody will stop and look. But once you move that much, uh, there's no way out. That's the 11th penalty here tonight for Kahuku. And work it through the middle again with Fono T. That whole plug, Jordan Lockhart was there. The ball for the Red Raiders, the five, and and that Fono penalty T. could loom large here for the Kahuku offense, trying to set up a ball control offense. It's already second and long. That went for practically no gain. So it's going to be tough here to run the ball. They're going to have to throw it. Look for Mana Carvalho to be the guy to bail them out here. The first and third downs have been very important here for Kahuku. Trying to avoid those third down and long situations. And a penalty flag down. This Ball time start. on Damon Lawaki. Number 24. Red Raiders. Five yard penalty. Second down. Bosco is loving it right now. And Kahuku. They're shaking a bit. 12 penalties over 100 yards. They need to settle down here. Still only second down. Look for a possible screen, uh, either this down or third down, especially if Bosco brings the heat. Two minutes off the clock already. One OT in the left slot. Five in the pattern, four rush after Tungo Vailoa. Omosa, he climbs. And he gets knocked down by Kamori House. Kamori House, his fourth tackle here tonight. One of four Braves players with four tackles. Yeah, these linebackers are no joke. They can run sideline to sideline. Down in 13. Ball on the 43 yard line. Plays outside linebacker in high school. He likely will be an inside linebacker by the time he hits college. But he gets to Washington. Either way, wherever you put Komori House, he delivers. Third and 13. Tangovai Lomosa just chucked it up. Had to throw that one away. Kingston Viliamu Asa applied the pressure right up the middle. Good job there from the Braves defense. Or Kingston Viliamuasa right there. Dialing up pressure on third down here. Nowhere to go with the ball. That was a smart play. Don't take the sack. Punt it and live for another day. But those two penalties killed him. It's the first punt here tonight. Pass Carvalho. 
Pressure coming. Carvalho takes a big inhale and exhale. And look at this punt. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Holy smokes. To the 15 yard line. 42 on the <laughs> kick. And that's from the line of scrimmage. Just like they drew it up, huh? So here's Carvalho. At first I thought, is he going to run with this? He probably thought about it for a second. What a next level athlete this guy is. If you take from the spot of where he kicked it, that's a 66 yard punt. Crazy. Braves take over from the 15. Cameron Jones, the running back. He's got the only touchdown here for the Braves. There goes the tight end, McKissick. And there goes Cameron Jones. Cameron Jones ridden down to the ground. Chauncey Alo, 227 pounds. Right on top of Jones. And Cameron Jones, who we saw in the <laughs> first half there. That's the guy you want to lean on here. Puka Mole leading the way up front on the line. Jones again. Jones up the middle. Bursting into the secondary eight and model tie the tackle. They're gashing this run defense to the 41 gate of 15. And this is just what the doctor ordered. If you are St. John Bosco, lean on that big O-line and the 6'2", 235-pound power back. Here he is again to the right. Submarined out there with a marker down. Alexander well, Matatidangi helped in along with Fiatoa. Flag down here on the run. Holding. Offense number 81. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. On the tight end, McKissick. Drive killers. McKissick's got good hands, too. He's a solid downfield blocker. And he has a ton to try and take down. He's 245 pounds. Chauncey Sylvester in the back. Sylvester hopping over, guys. And over Puka Mo to hop there. And LeBron Williams made the tackle. And Sylvester, who goes 5'11", 190, still a good size back. Not the power back that Jones is, but, you know, he's a talented player in his own right. Good academic athlete as well. 3.5 GPA for Sylvester. They're swinging out here to Stacey Dobbins. Dobbins ripped down there by Sione Passi. <laughs> Trying to utilize the speed for this receiving core. There's really only one senior, and that's Stacy Dobbins. Yeah, that's the guy I see them leaning on in the passing game because he's, he's such a mismatch in space. Leads the team in receptions this year at 237 receiving yards on 24 catches entering tonight. Third down and a dozen, marker down, Sanchez loaded up, downfield, Odom, got it, all the way home. There's a flag down on the near sideline. Daniel Odom. Did Odom and the rest of his receiving core Check in with the wing officials to see if they had enough on the line. How did Odom get that open? Illegal formation. Five, in the, five in the back oh, oh, oh. on the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Third down. And typically in a play like that, where it comes from a wing official right off the snap, they'll, they'll usually let the play go, which usually means an illegal formation. So let's see who's on. So the, the quarterback, the running back. Then you have McKissick, that's three. 
And I think maybe the receiver at the bottom, maybe the slot. Oldham looked like he was on the line. A five man in the backfield. Sanchez, sideline, wide open there, Tommy Maher. Hit there by Manu Leleayu. So they get all the penalty yards back and then some got a first out to 47. And Tommy Maher, so crafty underneath. Just a sure-handed, great route runner. Very flashy as a, as a receiver. Good hands. Keep it on the ground again. There's Sylvester. Butcher Negro. So we're expecting more to come from him over the course of the season. Turning the ball for the Braves, number five, Chauncey Sylvester. Of the six back rotation, half of them are seniors. Sione Posse makes the tackle there for Kahuku. It's with the seven minute mark of the third. Khalil Warren, the San Jose State offered athlete. Pass protects for Sanchez. Out of the backfield, Warren. Tripped up there by Fale Atawaya. Right at the 40-yard line. Gain of four. And down is Warren. Warren's a big back. We talked about him earlier. 243 pounds. What a load. And to see a guy that big catch the ball out of the backfield, man. Give Octawire credit for this sure leg tackle, but you can see the St. John Bosco Braves offense starting to gel here, starting to come into their own here in the third quarter. Sylvester in the back, here comes third and three. Sanchez stands tall and he completes it, gets the first down. Pulled down there by Madden Williams. The drive moves. This is a typical St. John Bosco offense that we're used to seeing. The adjustment's pretty good here for the Braves. Yeah, the adjustment is run the football and everything else will set up nicely. Throw it out here to Owen Tomich. Tomich gets his first touch of the night. Moves it forward to the 30-yard line. This is a nine-play drive so far. It's taken 341 off the clock. I'm surprised big Cameron Jones is not in there unless they're saving him for the red zone. Sanchez wants to load up. Open window for Madden Williams, and he stayed in bounds. What a job there for Madden Williams. Mana Carvalho pushed him out. And credit the offensive line giving so much time. It's just no one even close to Sanchez. Braves fans can feel it. Cameron Jones back in, the muscle man. Cameron Jones tumbles to the five. Three rushing touchdowns entering tonight. Picked up R RB and rushing touchdown number four earlier. And if you're Cameron Jones, you have to know that every defender is going to dive at your feet. They're not going to take you on. You're too big and strong. Jones is short. Malaki Soliai Tui made the tackle. You called it right, the muscle man, Cameron Jones. Third and goal. Wassell motions to the right, Cameron Jones over the top, did he get in? I think he jumped a little too early and landed short. I think you're right, Coach. Remember, if any part of that ball crosses the front part of the plane, it's a score. Oh, yeah, way short. By a yard. Force so, and goal. I give it to big Cameron Jones, but he's coming out of the game. Chauncey Sylvester now in. Fourth and goal here for the Braves, needing a touchdown. And first, a Kohuku called timeout. Timeout, Kohuku.
This will be the 14th play of this St. John Bosco drive when you come back. Out of the Kahuku called timeout. It's fourth and goal from the one, and here comes the 14th play of this drive for the Braves. Chauncey Sylvester the back. I'm surprised Jones is not back in. Sylvester, he is across for the Braves touchdown. Credit that big offensive line. Great explosion by the O-line. I mean, he was met by Moores in the backfield and others, but credit Sylvester driving his feet and second effort brought him across. And Marcus Lee slides it through, and we got a game here in Kahuku. Well, the Braves needed this on their first drive of the second half. Took nearly six minutes off the clock. But Chauncey Sylvester gets in. Big shout out to our friends at A&E Equipment Rentals. They're proud to support high school athletics as always premier supplier of aerial lift equipment and forklifts, including tonight's game. A&E and Nui will take your work to new heights. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Did he drop his glasses? Oh boy. Oh no, poor guy. <laughs> well. It's a good thing he's working camera. <laughs> CJ Wallace. Returnable from around the seven. Here comes Mana Carvalho. Carvalho brought down to the ground. And you can feel the momentum of this game swing heavily in favor of St. John Bosco after that drive. Uh, it's going to be so important for Kahuku, maybe not even to score here, but to drive the ball down the field, piece together some first downs, and change field position and give their defense a rest. After averaging a starting position in the first half of the 47-yard line, here they are starting again, this time at the 30-yard line. There are some hammers in that huddle right now. I'm just talking about the coaches. <laughs> Tale Serra. <laughs> Alvin Mariterangi. Braves fans get a little bit louder. Pressure on here for Kahuku to try and keep the momentum. Fono T through the middle into the arms there of Dutch Horisk. A 233-pound sophomore, the team's co-leader in tackles. Expectations sky for high for him. The great foundation to build on the next couple of years already has 10 offers. That is a great name. Dutch Horisk, 41 touch. Horisk. <laughs> Tamori House trying to creep in defensively there. And enough to play clock down. It's inside of 10. And now five. It's second and eight. Tongue by Lomosa. Clean pocket. The crosser incomplete to Komoku. We're not sure what he saw, but Mana Carvalho was wide open for a first down on the left flank, and he did not see him. Watch this layered route combination. Right behind was... Mana Carvalho in front of Komoku. Only three players have caught a pass here tonight for Kahuku. Another big third down. Tango by Loa Mosa deflected and it is incomplete. Epi, Sitanielli, Usumali'i, and now there's some shoving. Maxwell Amasio in the group, and now there's a scuffle. Flags are out. The Brave staff is doing a good job of keeping their players on the bench and not escalating the situation. And Kahuku trying to separate players in front of their bench. Yeah, you don't want to see that at all. 
There is a penalty flag through that scuffle. Oh, Maxwell Amasio, don't mess with him, by the way. 44 for the Braves. Played for the Belmont Shore rugby team. Got rugby strength. So after the deflection and the near after interception. The play, personal foul. Bosco. After the play, personal foul. Kohuku. Both penalties offset. Fourth down. Now bring up fourth down. Good job by both coaching staffs, by the way, making sure that the cooler heads prevail in that situation like that. On to for the Red Raiders, number two, Carvalho, But St. John Bosco is starting to catch hot right now. Remember the punt went behind Carvalho the first time, and it happened again. Carvalho gets it away, and it gets out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Looks like the 37 yard line. It's a five yard punt. Now officially the 37, yeah, wow, again. This is something rare. You see very rarely are special teams mishaps for Kahuku. They're so well coached on special teams and they have self-destructed. The first time they got out of it with a great punt that netted 42 yards, this time netted only five. Yeah, officially at the 40-yard line now. And a golden opportunity here for Caleb Sanchez and the Braves offense. Begins with a Sylvester run. Grabbed onto there by Manaterangi. Zayden Manaterangi. Second year of the varsity team, one of the nicest guys you're going to find on this squad. And one of the more aggressive ones when he puts on a helmet, too. What a great job here. Getting penetration in the backfield. Yamada Tedangi off the edge. That's a tackle for loss. Sanchez, clean pocket, wide open window. This one pulled down by Tommy Maher. Hit by Manuel Ayu. Got a first down right at the 29-yard line, gain of 14. Tommy Maher is a problem. And Tommy Maher, maybe the most cerebral receiver of the group. Waited for his time to shine, and it's shining here on the North Shore so far. Sylvester, six ahead down. It's knocked down there, maximum for number one, and gets the tackle. Remember, Kahuku burned a timeout earlier on a fourth and goal attempt for the Braves. Second down. Sylvester, first down. Ben Roberts there. The Braves average 113 rushing yards per game. They're nearing that average. With that big offensive line just wearing out the Kahuku front here. And that's been what happened in the second half. His big offensive line has taken over. The run game has really been the focal point here. Under nine rushing yards here tonight. 254 total yards for the Braves. 70 seconds to go in the third. Sanchez, quick throw, that was deflected, it was intended for Odom, and Zayden Malatenangi, all 6-2 of him, got a hand up in there. You see Caleb Sanchez, won a national title playing for the 14th Snoop League team in the 8th grade, <laughs> been surrounded by the sport. Went to camps over at St. John Bosco. Now he is a Brave. And slips it out to Odom. With a marker down, Odom. Ripped down to the ground at the five. Ben Roberts and Monica Carvalho make the tackle. But first, the flag. Remember, Odom had a touchdown that was called back because of an illegal formation. The 
54 seconds to go. This will be the 20th combined penalty if accepted. Holding offense, number 20. They're not penalty from the fall second down. A rule on Cameron Jones. So it pushes that one back, but it gives more room for the offense to throw the ball. But a night where Sanchez has only missed three times. 18 to 21. Sanchez stands. End zone shot. Back there for Odom. It is incomplete. Manu Tai broke it up. That would have been out of bounds anyway, even if Odom came up with it. Good job, though, by Manu Tai. You know, Bosco's thinking touchdown, not field goal here. A field goal would not serve them well. But look at the play by Manu Tai getting his mitts right in the middle. I'll tell you the pick six earlier here tonight for Kahuku. Sanchez swinging right now, firing back in the end zone, intercepted. It's Tedahiti Wolf. The former Buffin Blue stud, now Red Raider, gets the interception for Kahuku. Now, my, the question is, did he come out and go back in? That's one of the questions that I would have. Did he come out of the end zone? Oh, I think it was good. Let's see here. Good, 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 good. Ooh. I think it's good. Smart move. And that ends that drive just like that and now two interceptions for Sanchez after he only had one entering tonight and Kahuku gets a shot in the arm thanks to their defense 27 seconds to go here in the third Kahuku trying to hang on by the end of tonight knock off the defending national champions for OT the run my life on a team, man. You talk about a motor and an engine for a squad. Look no further than him. He just exudes durability and consistency. I'd like to see them run off tackle, though, with him, not up the middle. The, the middle has been patrolled by those two solid inside backers. Uh, you know, Lockhart leading the way. I mean, that's, uh, that's a tough place to run. We head to the fourth. Setting up for a fantastic finish here on the North Shore. Seven scored by Bosco in the period. Kahuku has a six-point lead. And this presentation of Hawaii Prep Football and OC16 continues after this. Polynesian Cultural Center, the Tiki's lit up. And just a few miles north of there, Red Raider Nation. In that third quarter, St. John Bosco had the ball for eight minutes and eight seconds. That last drive in an interception. And now here comes Tango Vailo Amosa trying to plow forward. He gets knocked down by Tawau Tiuli and Dutch Horace on the tag team tackle. What's going to make the difference here in the fourth coach, well, in your opinion? I'd like to see Kohuku run the ball off tackle. Uh, up the middle, it's just not happening. Run it off tackle, create some yardage and then do some RPO stuff and I'd throw the ball to Mano Carvalho. Mano Carvalho has proven himself that he is possibly the best player on the field tonight. Third and five. Delay a game. Delay a game, offense number 12, five-yard penalty, still third down. Kahuku only ran eight plays in the third. They only had one first down. And they led by as many as 19 in the game. Bosco scored the last 13 points. Yeah, you got to make something. You can't mail it in here. You can't just play defense and punt 
and hope for a turnover. You got offense got to do something here. Come by Lomosa, chased by Komori House. Firing down the field. Oh, it's this one's intercepted. Peyton Woodard. David Lawaki makes the tackle. Alabama commit makes a massive play for the Braves. Peyton Woodyard, 6'2", 197, just playing center field, watching the trajectory of the ball. That ball thrown behind Mana Carvalho. Coach Jason Negro says that Peyton is one of the most talented and intelligent players to ever play within the program. And that leadership right now exuding. Interception is good during the return. Sideline interference, Bosco. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. I remember it's sideline with contact. And they were warned earlier, but they get the possession and it pushes this one inside the 40. Looking for a football? Yes, they are. Caleb Sanchez. Here tonight, 18 to 20, 354 yards. He's thrown two interceptions after only having one entering this game. His dad Armando came to LA as a six-year-old from El Salvador. Mom Marino moved to LA from the Philippines. He's so proud of his parents and hoping to make a name for himself and making everyone in that community proud in LA. Manon Williams with space. It tripped up there on the way by Manon Soliai. It's a mad world. It's second down here. Cameron Jones. Jones gets up the sideline. Cameron Jones is just an animal. And I, I'm, so, I'm so impressed with the big offensive line just doing great work. Big number 71, King Large with a key block. Throw it out here to Daniel Odom. Odom, a cutback. He got hit by Fanoi Moana. Fanoi Moana all over the place. He's got five tackles. Soliai has eight. Those two are the leaders here defensively in terms of tackles for the Red Raiders. Can Tohoku stand strong? Quick throw. There's Manning Williams. Trying to rip the football out. Pushed out by Fenoy Moana. There been too many deep shots down the field. It's almost a definition of just taking what the de defense gives them. And this RPO offense that was an architect by Coach Negro and his staff. She was like, this is the right fit for the pace of this program. And Worked pretty well here in the second half. Yeah, it starts with the big old line just dominating in the trenches. Matthias Moe at 6'1", 376, number 78, doing some great stuff. Jones gets pushed back. Good job there by Hiram Moores. Well, looky here now, it's fourth down. Got a couple yards to go for the first. What a play by Hiram Moores. I had just highlighted Big 78, Matthias Moy, and Hiram Moores lowers his pad level and makes a tackle for no gain. What a stud. Each team has rolled the dice. Each team has paid off by going for it on fourth down so far. Maritirangi switches sides with Chauncey Alo defensively. Jones the back. Timeout taken by Bosco. Time out, Bosco. St. John Bosco. TV timeout. A number of Bosco fans have been staying in Waikiki. The team's been staying up on the North Shore. You see downtown Waikiki. In all its glory. Fourth and two here for the Braves. Going for it. Sanchez. 
Rolling, firing, it is pulled in there by Tommy Maher. Right on time. Good old Tommy Maher makes the catch. Man, Tommy Maher. Talk about money. Sanchez rolling off of his back foot. And Maher just making it look easy. Sylvester's the back. It's first and ten. They can still get a first down inside the two. Sylvester reversed it back here to Dobbins. Dobbins against Moores. Got by him. And then hit out by Fale Atawaya. Trying to use that edge rushing speed here from Dobbins on the reverse, but Koku had it well scouted. And Sanchez, the quarterback, having to lay a block here against Hira Moores and gets flattened. <laughs> Not a place where you want your quarterback to be. He's like, do I have to do that again? Do I have to block somebody like that, man? Joe Sanchez with just an offer from Nevada. We expect that number to grow, that mailbox to be filled by the time this senior season ends. Second and eight. Sylvester. Try to get to the outside, and Fale Atuaya hangs onto his leg. Fale Atuaya, one of the best low tackling machines in the OIA. And he does it again, you're right. He does it again. Just zeroes in and wraps you up. Six tackles for him. Let's go. Who have a goal line stand in their future? Bosco driving to try and tie or take. Sylvester carving his way for the game tying touchdown. Sylvester with so much patience doesn't just ram it in there. He takes his time, reads the play, runs to daylight. Great job. Marcus Lee to try and give the Braves the lead. Nailed it. It's the first lead for the Braves since it was 3-0 with 6.17 to go in the opening period. A heck of a run here for the Braves. 20 straight points and the lead for St. John Bosco. There is John C. Sylvester. Offers, as we mentioned, from San Jose State, UNLV, Utah Tech, Weber State, Georgetown, Bowling Green, Arizona. The list goes on and on. He stays patient and waits for things to develop and come to him before attacking those gaps. Went right through for the go-ahead score for the Braves, who have scored the last 20 points here. Returnable deep to the corner, Mana Carvalho. Running out of room. Carvalho. How is he staying up? Wow. Isaiah Lee helping in on the tackle for the Braves. One of 30 seniors on the team. There's still plenty of time here for the Red Raiders to work with. Just a one point game. And now Goku's medal really going to be tested. The number one team in Hawaii. Two time defending Division I Open champions. Taking it to the defending national champions tonight. Fono T trying to plow it forward. So if they can get about four, four and a half yards on their runs and stay penalty free. Luka's got a decent chance here. Thinks Indombrado made that tackle. Again, the one time they've ran Fonoti off tackle, he gained 15 yards. Every single other time it's been between the tackles and it's been for much smaller gains. He's had to work for every single one of those 34 yards tonight. 
going for more. Wow, how about him delivering the boom shot? Komori House hangs on to his ankle. And so Fonoti gives it right back to him. <laughs> Fonoti delivering the blow here. Woo. That was enough for a first down. Just the 10th first down here tonight for the Red Raiders. St. John Bosco's got 20 of them. Tongo by Loa Mosa. 71 passing yards. Fono T again. And what's so underrated here with Kahuku, and it's not talked about enough, is that offensive line, which has been the real reason why Kahuku has created their dynasty and their legacy winning championships. Billy Vaal Saluni right there, 293 pounds helping in the cause. Panama, a freshman. He's going to be dynamite these next three years after this freshman season. Those guys up front, the real workhorse is here for Kahuku. Send Bo Pruitt in motion for Tungavailoa Mosa to keep it. The helmet popped off as a marker goes down. Lance Olive Enos made the tackle there for the Braves. Now the ruling is if the helmet comes off, he has to come off. Unless the helmet wow. was ripped off, as you can see it was ripped off. That's going to be a face mask, 15-yard penalty. Call, face mask. Jordan Defense. Lockhart. Mask. Number 15. 15 yards. First off. Yeah, you called it, Coach, right on cue. It is on Lockhart, who literally just ripped the armor off of Tungo by Loa Mosa. Tohu just outside the top 50 in the Max Preps rankings of 55. Well, that was not a smart play. Lockhart, what a stud player, but to rip off the helmet of the quarterback. To give him 15 yards, not a smart play at all. Halfway home here in the fourth. Tungovailo Almosa looking long, floating one. This is incomplete on Monte Carvalho. It was guarded by Sir Tyler Thomas on the route. And you got to give the Kahuku O-line credit because they gave a lot of time to Tuli Tango Mosa that time just misfired and low. You know, somebody else has to step up. It can't just be the Mana Carvalho show. We need another. They need, they, Kuhuku needs another receiver to step up here. They've only targeted Diesel Komoku a couple of times. And again, only three players have caught a pass this evening for Kuhuku. Fono T tries to run off tackle, and he gets tagged by Sir Tyler Thomas, the three-star linebacker. Offer from Minot State in North Dakota. Covers a lot of ground with his speed, and he caught up to Malai Fono T. There he comes from the backside, unblocked. Just well coached. 39 now. Kahuku's three for eight tonight in third downs. It's going to be interesting to see what they do here at St. John Bosco. Last time they dropped eight and rushed three and gave Tuli uh, Tango Bailoa Almosa a lot of time. Will they send the house here on third and nine? And they go empty. Five in the pattern, three rush. Tango Bailoa Almosa gets outside, chased by Horace. Keeps the eyes downfield. This one is fought for, and the Braves say they have it. Off an interception. In the pile of bodies and through the mosh pit, the Braves say they took it away. And they did. Tamal Johnson. He made the play on Komoku. Did he maintain possession? in bounds but Johnson got it there still fighting for it. Johnson all the way yeah, Johnson has it all the way great job by Johnson first interception of the season 
Georgetown, Colgate, Idaho, Campbell University, Northern Arizona looking his way. And he comes up with a big play, and here comes big Cameron Jones. The sledgehammer coming in to finish things off here. A penalty flag down. Ten flags on the Braves, 13 on Kahuku here tonight. Holding offense, number three. They're not trying to be against the Red Raiders. From Daniel Odom. Back to the 45 yard line, back to the run here from Jones. And Jones, oh, right there. you can see Odom with two fistfuls of jersey. Extra protection on the right with McKissick to block for Jones. Who gets upended. Shaded new. You know, There's a locomotive yeah. on the tracks, coach. I mean, if you don't get him when he's in the backfield and get at his legs, and once he starts turning the shoulders upfield, look out. And for St. John Bosco tonight, it's been lights, Cameron, action. The rushing touchdown earlier, 13 shy of 100 rushing yards here tonight. Here he is again. Good job in the defense of Kahuku. Fale Atawaya going low to make a solid tackle. Tackle seven here tonight for him. What a huge drive here. There's Fale Atawaya lowering the boom. And if you're going to tackle a big back, you got to get him low and around the ankles. Big third down here. Three minutes to go. Sanchez is 22 of 27 for 172 yards. He's not thrown a touchdown pass tonight. Gets it off to Jones out of the backfield. Chauncey Alo at the tackle. Fourth down now for the Braves. The smart play was to punt it and bury Kohuku deep and force them to go the length of the field. And this will be the first punt here tonight for the Braves, and it comes with 2.42 to go in the fourth. But what a smart punt. Mana Carvalho back to return the Marcus Lee punt. Does Madden Soliai have another blocked punt in him? Lee, a top 25 ranked punter in the state of California. Try and pin him back. This one off the side of the foot here for Lee. And it goes out. And Kahuku with life and with two and a half remaining to try and knock off the national champions from last year. And Marcus Lee, a great punter, but he probably was just so cold from inactivity. That was the first <laughs> punt of the game in the fourth quarter. He's like, wait, I got a punt? Wow. <laughs> Man, and Soli, I applied the pressure on him. Field goal range, by the way, for Kahale Puna. Up the around 40. Which means from this spot, they need to go 47 yards. One drive can make this Kouku team tonight legendary. And it begins from the 30. Two timeouts left. Right up the middle there for Fono T. Lance Olive Enos made the tackle. What a stop there for the 251 pound sophomore. Yeah, I always laugh when I look at the roster and somebody weighs 251. Yeah. I mean, that's so precise. Exactly. I mean, like, did he weigh in after lunch? I mean. <laughs> well, he's been feasting here tonight. Olive Enos, four tackles for him. Two minutes to go and two timeouts now. Second down. 
They bring the pressure. They throw it up top. It's incomplete. Trying to get Aiden Manutai. It's one of the best blitzing teams in the Trinity League. St. John Bosco and Kamari House applaud the pressure. Well, a passing game developed during the pylon seasons the last three years. Can Kohuku at least get 10 yards? Look for Mano Cavallo. We're going to isolate him opposite of trips. Dana not moving this one, batted away, intended for Carvalho, and it's Frankie Edwards, the third. Four years with the program, a three-star defensive back. And Kahuku's chances of winning comes down to this. In all Nearly likelihood. intercepted. I mean, in that area, everybody knows we're going to throw it to Mano Carvalho. But Frankie Edwards... Nice job there. Got to get 10 here. Tango by Loamosa. Blitz coming. Up top throw. It is incomplete. Penalty flag sails in. Wow. Man, Kingston, Viliamu, Asa, and Epi Sitanieli Usumali'i were coming right after Tungovailo Amosa. The Bosco fans not happy. We're having a discussion right now. Holding, defense, that penalty's decline. Interference, defense number two. Oh, wow. 15 knots on a previous spot, results in a foul, first stop. Two penalties there, and they take the 15-yard pass interference. Let's see here. So he gets hit, and on the right side of the screen, John... Tamal Johnson held Komoku. Fresh set of downs. Tango by Loa Mosa. The crosser there is Manutai. Second catch tonight. Hit there by Johnson. To the plus side of the field. Clock spinning 90 seconds to go. They need about 20 more yards to get into field goal range roughly. Short throw, Carvalho, downfield block, tries to get the sideline, gets to the stick. Man. Chased out by Rickenbacker. Are you kidding me? Mana Carvalho. A short pass in the backfield, doesn't look like it's gonna mount to much, but Mana Carvalho just picking his way through. To the 45-yard line, a minute 14 remaining. Can Kohuku pull it off against the defending national champions? This is play six of the drive. Tango by Mosa works it up the middle, and he's ripped down by Dutch Forrest. I just like saying that name, Dutch Forrest. What a throwback name. They bunch at the line. The clock is still spinning here, and Kohuku not opting to take a timeout. They're going to roll with it. And the 41, design run. Tango by Loamosa hangs onto the football, and a flag is out this time. Penalty flag here. Could be a late hit. on the field. Personal foul. Helmet contact defense number 21. Wow. 15 yards. 
He's up for a fall. First down. It's on Frankie Edwards and Kohuku just on the fringe of field goal range here with 44 seconds to go. Helmet contact by Edwards. Clock spinning here. Tango by Lomosa. Fonoti out of the backfield. In the red zone. Knocked out by Frankie Edwards. Smart play by Fonoti. Working the sidelines, getting out of bounds. Stopping the clock with 29 seconds. Are you kidding me? What a game. Kahuku has only knocked off five California teams since 1990. They lost last year to St. John Bosco. Can they win one for Kahuku and Hawaii tonight? From the 18. Tumble by Lomosa. Runs it up the middle. At the 10. At the 5. Touchdown, Kahuku. That play had not worked all night. And it, against conventional wisdom, they ran it when it counted most. Amazing play by Tuli. And remember, you go back to the drop. The fourth down, pass interference call. Then the lead hit. And Tuli Tungovailoa Mosa gets the rushing touchdown here tonight. And has given Kohuku the lead. Wow. What a call. Amazing. This is stunning. Kohuku has scored against St. John Bosco here in the first time since the second quarter. And he showed the leadership, he showed that speed, and more importantly, he showed the tenacity. After the seventh grade, he went to Alabama to train with Nalu Tungovailoa and Taulia Tungovailoa, who at the time was at Alabaster High School. He worked on his footwork. Fonoti now lines up for a two-point conversion. Jump pass, caught, Almoa Jr. Wow. <laughs> Kahuku has got the lead and Kamori House is down. Look at this, the jump pass. A la Derrick Henry. And now a flag is up. It's a late flag after the conversion and House might have had some words. Remember last After the year. play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number six of Bosco, 15 yards. That is number six, unsportsmanlike foul towards ejection. Remember last year against St. Francis, it was almost the complete opposite. Right? Kohuku gets the lead. I mean, Kohuku had a goal line stand early. Yep. And then St. Francis in the waning moments. Touchdown pass to win the game. So 23 seconds left. Two timeouts here. St. John Bosco 
This is their final non-league game before Trinity, Trinity League of play begins. I think that's the first time I've ever seen Sterling Carvalho without a hat. <laughs> game not over yet. Uh, Bosco with electrifying playmakers all over the field. Got to keep playing here with 23 seconds. So the kick goes to the end zone. And a flag is out. And this game, I think, from the Bosco sideline. I mean, you're going to remember that drive for a long time if Kahuku is able to hang on to this one. And the run from Tuli Tungvaluwa Mosa. Quarterback ISO was the play. And it had not worked most of the night. Mm -hmm. But when it counted, when, it, when they needed it most, it was untouched, perfectly executed. After the play, on sportsman like Kondo, on Bosco's bench, uh -oh. half the distance, first and ten. And uh, Jason Negro. Not happy. Yeah. And so it takes it to the ten yard line. Sanchez looks long. Sanchez fires it out. This one. Oh, wow. What a catch there from Dobbins. Dropped it in the bucket. And still with 15 seconds to go. Remember, this is an interleague game. Or non-league game, I should say. Non-league game. And so if the score is tied, we won't get overtime. First down. Sanchez. In the pocket, sliding. Sanchez incomplete to Sylvester. Eight seconds to go. Uh, you might be able to get one more playoff, or two more plays, I should say. But this one has to get to midfield to at least give you a chance. I mean, at this point, uh, possibly a you know, multi-lateral type of play, a hook and lateral with a bunch of laterals. Sanchez. Sanchez firing downfield for Odom. Incomplete. Off of Soliai. And Bosco's down to the final play. And slow to get up there was Mana Carvalho. I mean, everything, they're just pouring everything out right now. Look like he got hit possibly in the solar plexus, maybe lost Ooh. his wind. Even the, even the way he landed. He's holding his stomach. You ever get hit in a solar plexus and lose your wind? Oh, yeah. That's a horrible feeling. And, and it's not just the pain, it's the panic that yeah. sets in because you lose your breath. And this has been a breathless performance for Kahuku if they are able to hang on. And right now, Nihal Pule, the defensive coordinator for the Red Raiders, Essentially trying to draw up a full prevent defense. Fireworks are going off here up north. It was a pretty good one, Kahuku, but Campbell had a really good one last night. Right, what are you thinking here? I'm thinking a, a multilateral deal. Maybe a, 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 a long pass and a hook and ladder. But Kahuku has a whole bunch of guys back there. Essentially full prevent defense. Two seconds to go here for Sanchez. 
And a timeout taken by Kahuku. Timeout, Kahuku. I, I can't even really begin to describe that last couple of drives here for Kahuku. What? A run by St. John Bosco. They score 20 points in a row. They take a 23-22 lead. And in the drive, yet from another tumble by Loa, I could really put a stamp on his legacy. This time, courtesy of Julie Tumble by Loa Mosa. What, what, a, what a game. What a performance by this Kohuku team, by, by Tuli and, and the offense, even with the mis uh, mistakes. Yeah, and so they came back and, and performed when they needed it most. Bosco, by the way, 15 penalties, 163 yards. Kohuku, 13 penalties, 105 yards. Two seconds to go. Sanchez looks downfield. He throws. It's caught by Odom. And this penalty marker is down. The game is not over yet. The game not over yet as Odom took a pop. Malaki Soliai Tui tagged him. And now coaches for Bosco on the field. Another flag comes out. Coaches have to be pulled back from St. John Bosco. One and now the they have to settle this. Ran onto the field and looked like he was wanting to assault one of the referees. Had to be held back by his own coaching staff and some of his players. Certain Carpaccio is saying it's a wrap-up tackle, so it should be clean, but the penalty flag is down. There's no penalty on the play. It was a wrap tackle. Ball game. And now the game is over. And now it's a matter of keeping everyone safe. Especially the referees as the coaching staff is trying to talk to them. Well, this is a night Kahuku will never forget. The Red Raiders have defeated the defending national champions. And now, you gotta watch out for the handshake signs. And the Bosco showing a lot of class right now. Staying calm and hopefully, tempers will go down. And that's how this ends. Kohuku. Maybe the upset of the season nationwide. They knock off St. John Bosco. Coach, you and I have been together for 10 seasons. I ain't never going to forget this one. You know, 50 weeks ago, we almost saw an identical situation with a number three team coming in here and narrowly escaping with a win over Kohuku. But tonight it was different. Tonight, Kohuku took an early lead gave up that lead and then in the end just had the fire just enough firepower to get it done but what a bizarre ending yeah. at the end we saw uh, St. John Bosco a couple of coaches rush onto the field to look like they were going to fight with the referees it was, it was ugly bizarre and I'm, I'm glad cooler heads prevailed and thankfully the handshake line showed a lot of respect from St. John Bosco and uh, Kuhu also reciprocating that level of respect, the shaking hands. It's just been a, an incredible night here for Kahuku and a win this program and this community will never ever forget. They knock off the defending Ready. national champions and have St. John Bosco, the number three team in the country this year, their first loss of this season. Time now for the Hawaii Honda Dieters Impact Player for Kahuku with Jimmy. Yeah, thanks a lot guys. Mono Coralio is here again and last time we had you, it was for defense, five interceptions. Tonight, offense, especially in that first half, you had a couple of touchdowns. Talk to me about the first half and what you did then. I mean, it's just the game plan we had coming into this game and just trusting my O-line, of course, setting up good blocks and Tuli on that touchdown pass, just putting it up there and letting me get a chance. 
Now the second half was a struggle, but you guys get that ball with the one chance to get it in there and take the lead, and you do it. What happened on that drive for you? Uh, our team, we just, we don't give up. So I know we had a lot of turnovers and a lot of breakdown moments, but we all come together and play as a team and we just finish it. Where does this cement this particular team in the history of Kahuku High School football? Uh, honestly, I feel like this could be the best Kahuku football team. I mean, we just beat the number three team in the nation, so I don't remember, I don't recall any other Kahuku team doing that. Love it, man. Great job by Monica Carvalho tonight. Heal up, brother. We'll see you again soon. Guys, back to you. From the get-go, they relied on his leadership and his speed and almost the unpredictability from the magic man that is Mana Carvalho. He did it defensively. He did it as a receiver. He rushed for a touchdown through a two-point conversion. And every single one of those yards and those scores mattered in a game like this. Oh, man, this guy is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, watching this kid play, uh, but just masterful and everything he does, he does it at a high level, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, just amazing. The guy has mana. And the improvisation skills to throw it there. And to my junior got the two point conversion. Incredible. So Mana Carvalho being uh, given his, uh, his flowers, if you will, here tonight. Sterling Carvalho had signature wins to win the state championship against St. Louis last year, two, or uh, two years ago, Punahou last year, and now tonight they knock off the number three team in the country and the winning head coach is with Jimmy. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. As Sterling, you just said as you came over here, we did it, we finished it. You're alluding to last year against St. Francis. Tonight you pull it out. What was the key for you guys? It was that I told them tonight at the start of the game, I said, tonight we got to finish. It's going to be a dogfight, but that's what we did tonight. We finished, and the players did awesome. I just want to thank my coaches. Mana said in the interview here, I asked him, where does this cement this team in the, in the history of Kahuku? He said, well, we got to be the best, right? Because nobody else has done this before. What, what are your thoughts on, on this particular team in Kahuku history? Um, they deserve it. As I told them, this was their night. Let them enjoy it, right? And, and that's all they had to do was just believe. Believe and stick together and finish, and that's what they did tonight. So proud of these boys. What do you guys do after this? Like, what are the cel we already saw some fireworks. What are the celebrations like for you guys? I mean, we, we know that this is a means to an end. We want to hold that core trophy at the end in November. But for now, we're going to cherish this moment. We're going to cherish this moment, and Red Raider Nation came alive for us. You're pointing to that haka behind us right now. Describe that to me and what it means to Kahuku football. I mean, it's mana. That's basically what it is. But not just our football team, it's all our Red Raider Nation, those who went before and those who will come after us. This is family, this is mana. I love it. Sterling Carvalho, the winning head coach. Guys, back to you. A powerful show of culture and spirit and pride for this community with the Haka and this team. Incredible. 30 Incredible. to 23 the final here as Kuka wins this one. Time now for the Boy Honda Deers Impact player for the Braves of St. John Bosco. This is going to be a tough one, but I'll tell you what, Cameron Jones was an absolute animal this evening here for the Braves. He was a one man wrecking crew. Uh, just big, strong, a sledgehammer. Uh, I thought he should have carried the ball more. Uh, I, I really thought that if he had carried 25, 30 times, maybe the humidity of the season here in Hawaii. I'm not sure what it was, but I got if I have a back like that, I'm riding him all the way. Just all that talent there for St. John Bosco, and they will have a bigger game against Modern Day coming up in about a month. But for now, the celebration time here for Kahuku as they win this one, and of all the plays that we have seen, the zaniness, the craziness, here is the Taco Bell play of the game. We think we know what it is. How about a signature moment for this senior? Tuli Tungabailoa Amosa on his feet and into Kahuku lore. You know, this play, they called it a couple of times and it went nowhere. But at the moment they needed that play, they executed it perfectly. The blocking, I mean, it was a sensational play call, well executed. Blocking was on point, and Tuli ran with it to get in for the win. You know, what what a game. I mean, penalties. Uh, Kuhuku had 13 penalties, yeah. and Bosco had 
15 penalties. So this wasn't a very cleanly played game. They both both teams with 15 and 13 penalties. Uh, both fans on either side moaning and groaning. But you know it was called on, on either side. A lot of penalties on both sides. Both quarterbacks threw two interceptions here tonight. Tungle by Lil Mosa went nine for 20, 89 yards and a touchdown. But the one that mattered the most to use with his feet with 23 seconds to go in the game and Kohoku defeats the defending national champions. And just think, we have more to talk about in the post-game show which comes your way in just a bit. Everyone else, a good note and everyone in Spectrum 1, Spectrum News 1 in LA, thank you so much for staying up late with us. What a game here in Hawaii. We'll continue it here in Hawaii on OC16 in just a moment. The post-game show from Kohoku coming up. incredible performance here this evening between two of the best in the country and on this night it belonged to their leader Tuli Tungobailoa Amosa unsteady at first didn't have the best completion percentage but when he needed to make the big throws that mattered in the biggest moments he did what a bounce back game for Tuli you know last week on the road in Santa Ana losing 55 to 8 to modern day and then to come back and to engineer this offense to the win and to get the winning score proud of that young man great kid great young man he deserves it they were just outside the top 50 in the max preps rankings by the time monday rolls around we'll see how high kahuku will jump in large part because this kid helped jump over saint john bosco here tonight Here's Tuli Tungovailoa Mosa with Jimmy. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And he brought some friends with him. Tuli, let's talk about that last drive first off because, you know, you're in that position. You got to drive. You got to win it. And it was a tough second half for you. And you're the one controlling it. What did you see in that last drive? Oh, well, first and foremost, I want to thank God, give him all the glory. Without God, I mean, none of this is possible. I mean, the whole game, uh, I just knew my guys had my back. Everyone, defense, offense, special teams. It was just a great team win. And going into that last drive, I mean, Defense got us the ball back, and I mean, we just had to go out there. Uh, you know, in practice, we worked hard every day, two minute old, two minute drill, and just competing against our defense. I mean, I think it prepared us very well for this moment, and I mean, it all glory to God. That last touchdown that you scored, one of the things that Coach Darren had said when he saw it, that play hadn't really been working for most of that half, and all of a sudden you just opened it up. What did you see once you got the ball? Well, I mean, Coach gave us a play call, and we just had to execute. And my linemen, they opened up a big hole for me, and. I mean, I'll prop to them, man. That was a great. You, you brought them here with you, and, and it was very important for you. You said, I, I don't want to step in here and do this interview till they're all here. How much do these guys mean to you? Man, I mean, everything. Uh, the linemen, I mean, everyone, man, the whole team. It's great that I have my linemen here. I mean, they are believing us, babe. God damn it. Hey, hey, linemen, what do you think of this guy right here? Yeah. Hey, he a dog. He a dog. He a dog, baby. That's all there is. Hey, guys, what a great group. Back to you. And the humility of him after he thanks the guys that are blocking out in front. I mean, that play was so well executed. Amazing. And that's going to be a moment that he will never, ever, ever forget. What a performance. Post-game show here, Felipe Ojasco, Darren Hernandez, and Jimmy Bender. Okay, that's the non-league season pretty much for each of these two programs. Now, as Coach Sterling Carvalho mentioned, they have to get back to work as they try and capture a third straight HHSA championship. But how much does this help in that run to go for the dynasty? It's amazing because they've played the best of the best in the nation. You know, when it comes to high school football, uh, it's, it's California, Florida, Texas. Uh, they're, they're known as the big dogs. And when you compete against the best, and you can win against the best in the nation, that is amazing. That, that gives your team an incredible high. To the final numbers here this evening, the penalties you are going to circle, 28 combined flags, 268 combined yards. The turnovers, each of them fumbled the football, each quarterback threw two interceptions. Caleb Sanchez, 25 of 32, 211 yards. No passing touchdowns here tonight. And a game where Kahuku had 
130 fewer total yards. That time of possession favored them. They controlled it. Things looked a little bleak. It was a 20-point run for the Braves. They had a one-point lead, and Kohoku, with that magic, does it again, Jimmy. Yeah, guys, and the one thing I wanted to highlight tonight is I, I was looking for pieces that Sterling Carvalho could take away from this game as highlights. You know, not, not sure if they'd win, let's be honest, but I tell you what, this play right here, Mono Carvalho getting him started with the reverse, and he fooled everybody where I was. I was right in the end zone trying to record this. I went right with it. Oh, there he is left. Fooled all of us and ends up in the end zone, including St. John Bosco. Fooled them too. How about the defense stepping up as well in the first half? You're going to see Aiden Monotai jump that ball, jump the route, and he's all the way. This is the pick six that kind of breaks the back there early in the first half. Aiden Monotai just seeing it all the way. Read the eyes, jump in front, look at all that open field. It's all his. Putting up Kahuku early, but like I said, though, that second half, kind of tough. What's going to be the final play here? You know what it is. Tuli Tungavailoa Amosa. Coach Darren said it. That play was not really working, but what I saw in that last drive, even Malai Fonoti, there was an extra desperation in them to get those extra yards. They found a way in the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner, guys. And this is one of the unique games that we have seen here all season, guys. Well, one of, one of the things that just blows my mind when I look at the stat sheet is that a, a, a team, a, 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 I mean, I, I'm at a loss for words. There's no sacks <laughs> tonight. Yeah, a defense, both defenses. I mean, are you kidding me? We're talking high-quality defenses here. Zero sacks on the quarterback tonight. I've never seen a game or been involved in a game at this high level where the defensive lines have zero sacks. It's amazing. Especially with the amount of talent that we saw on the field here tonight. Alabama, Notre Dame, Texas A&M. But tonight, Crazy. I mean, that magic on the field, as we mentioned, there's just this aura around this field that has blessed these Kahuku fans, and this is going to be a win and a night they will never, ever forget. We wrap it up when you come back here from Kahuku. Pretty nice way to wrap up week six of the football season. That man, a legend here on the North Shore. Big staff here at Kahuku, the athletic director. I mean, best hospitality, easily. And the best game of the year, Kahuku. Able to knock off number three, St. John Bosco. And so we head to week seven next week with a whole lot more storylines, right? So Felipe Coach and Jimmy, so Puno Kamehameha coming up on Friday. That's your programming note. The longest rivalry in the nation in terms of games. Punaho coming up short to Campbell yesterday after a 24-point third quarter for the Sabres. But now the real season begins for all these teams in the OIA and in the ILH because every game definitely matters. And it's the first of two regular season meetings on Friday between the Buffalo and the Warriors. Boy, this is shaping up to be a knockdown drag out season. So exciting. Uh, we, we are getting into the groove, the meat of the season, yeah. uh, if you will. Uh, I, I, I got to give a shout out, though, to both offensive lines. Yep. You know, we, we talked about no sacks in the last segment, but why? Why was that? Both offensive lines. Tremendous job. So that's your programming note. And uh, time now for extra points. One final thought from all of us. You want to go first? You can have the floor first. Yeah. I, you know, I want to give a shout out to Tuli Tangovailoa Mosa. You know, young man who lost his dad uh, two years ago and uh, just it gets persevered. And, mm. you know, you, you can't find a nicer young man than he is. And I'm happy for, I'm happy for that young man. Uh, shout out to everyone at St. John Bosco for uh, taking some time and chatting with us in our preparation throughout the week. And a bigger shout out here to the fans of Kahuku. They were here about two and a half hours, three hours, just prior to gates opening, trying to get their spot. They rushed in and they needed every bit of that spirit to help fuel these young men as they knock off the number three team in the country. Just outstanding work again here from Red Raider Nation as always. Jimmy, this game was about two hours and 44 well, minutes. Yeah. What's your takeaway? Well, look, uh, I, I just want to say this to the people that have been watching in California. You may have seen uh, a couple of fireworks going off here or there in the game. I just want to say this. You ain't seen nothing yet unless you've seen a Campbell game. Yeah. If you get a chance to watch last <laughs> yeah. night's game with yeah. Campbell that you mentioned, uh, yeah, that's a whole different ball game right there, guys. It looked yeah. like the Hilton Hawaiian yeah, Village. And like, we don't uh, condone it. No. It looked like Disney World. <laughs> it did. <laughs> it did. Or, or uh, Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Vegas. 
Uh, our friends at NEP, this has been a very busy week with two volleyball games and an X-Cast game yesterday and two OC16 games Friday, Saturday. So we appreciate you as always. Enjoy your weekend. We will see all of you next Friday for the Buffin Blue and the undefeated Kamehameha Kapalama Warrior. Shout out to Hill Jermunda. We'll see all of you later. Family time, as always, after a big win with Coach and Jimmy, our producer, Dave Vinton, our director, Kelly Nakasone, for Tom Yoshida, John Gina, Sean Suyoka, my guy, Brad, as always. I'm Felipe Ojastro. Support high school sports. So long from Kohuku.